Hi, I'm Phil McCann, and welcome to my CFO interview series. I'm honoured to have the opportunity to speak with some of Australia's most successful global CFOs on topics that are increasingly part of the boardroom agenda. Several of these CFOs are clients of Hodges Burnson, maybe people we've helped place. All the people I view with the utmost respect. Please enjoy the conversations. Hello, my name is Caroline Deva, and I co-chair Inclusion and Diversity at Algers Burnson in Australia. We work with our clients every day to help them make decisions that adds value to their businesses. And inclusion and diversity is a significant contributor to their success. Like us, our clients know that not only is equity and diversity the right thing to do, but it's also something that makes great business sense. My colleague Phil McCann's series with some of the world's leading Australian CFOs is testament to this. The important piece around the research that we do is not just one thing. We actually cover the entire spectrum of diversity. So it's not just gender. And there's quite a bit of research on gender, but we cover cultural diversity, LGBTI+, plus, um, you know, um, First Nations, people with a disability. We also know through the work of, of the 30% Club and the AICD, there's been quite a bit of focus around getting, um, you know, a certain percentage of women onto boards, and this includes public company boards. Um, and I think for, for the 200, it's sitting just over 30%. But you're talking about 30% women, 70% men, and it still doesn't meet any sort of criteria of what we think we would think is fair um, within Australia, and certainly does not pick up the capabilities that exist within the Australian workforce into these positions of leadership. Lack of diversity we have in our leadership ranks, executive leadership ranks in our, in our largest and even smallest companies in Australia, but also on boards, the, that lack of leadership, um, the diversity in leadership is one of the most dangerous things an organisation can have because you're missing out on the best talent and perspective, especially when the, uh, the economic and global, global environment and the conditions by which our organisations are working in is significantly changing and, and changing really quickly. So missing that diversity is dangerous. But I'm delighted and very proud of the way, you know, our culture has evolved over the last few years at QBE. Uh, we have this uh, wonderful set of cultural attributes we call our DNA. Because what we're looking to do is really shift our emphasis from just diversity to the inclusion of diversity. And what this really means is how we you know, really bring together a very diverse set of people from different ages, from different cultural backgrounds and genders and ensure that they feel valued, uh, they feel respected and really encouraged to contribute their perspectives to support you know, the success of the company. And so sitting at the heart of all of this is a real desire to build a deep sense of respect and a deep sense of fairness in the way we interact with our colleagues. On diversity, we feel really good about our progress at a corporate level and across our businesses. For the financial year just ended and we were about to disclose the proxy coming up, our female representation among senior leadership increased 4% over the prior year, which was great, particularly through a very turbulent period. And 52% of our managers in our domestic workforce, which are in the US, a woman across the same workforce, female and ethnic minority representations exceeded that um, when we compare ourselves to um, our competitors. And so those stats are complemented by our board composition as well, which reflects the importance of diversity to the board. So on our board, we've actually got 33% of our directors are females. We have seven board members who are citizens of countries outside of the US and three on our board who, who self-identify as Asian or Hispanic. 
And we also have an age range from 41 to 90, which is quite a big age range um, for any board. And I think that composition allows our board to consider many diverse views and perspectives as we work our way across our businesses. And while we feel really good about the progress on diversity and the conversations that we have, we're obviously, like most businesses, always looking to improve. Um, this involves us having a look at areas like our recruitment practices to make sure that they're fit for purpose, our employee development and mentoring and inclusivity programs that we have across all our businesses and we tailor those to meet our business needs in their respective industries and geographies and across all our businesses we're working to strengthen our culture of inclusion and this forms a key part of our ESG strategy with oversight from the board. So diversity inclusion is super important for Yahoo. Um, we've got about 900 million users around the globe, uh, about 10,000 employees that we care for, um, and, and each of them with diverse backgrounds, diverse thinking, that obviously help to drive our business forward. And so just to give you some examples there, right? So we have ERGs or what we call employee resource groups. We currently have a total of about 10 groups um, with our newest one dedicated to Native Americans. Um, some other groups that we have include BOLD, which stands for Black Organizers, Leaders and Doers, PRISM, which is our LGBTQ group, um, PAC for Parents and Caregivers, Elevation Group, and then obviously more. But, but essentially, look, these groups are all focused on building culture, communicate, uh, community, and awareness at Yahoo, and really play a critical role in, in Yahoo's vision to become an employer of choice. Um, and look, we, we obviously have products that amplify DEIB across our brands, right? So um, an example there, we have Yahoo Live, which celebrates inclusion and belonging allyship through stories of real people. We have Yahoo News that you know, publishes high impacting reporting on systemic racism, um, social inequality, and other really important topics. And um, on Yahoo Finance, we were recently rated on Comscore as uh, being the number one property for, for female audiences there. So really strong products that are focused on really important topics. So diversity and inclusion at HP is in uh, very, very high focus from the very top. Um, there is an extremely strong sponsorship from the board, the CEO and senior management to drive very intentionally and systematically diversity and inclusion across our company. We spend a lot of time uh, talking and listening to our African-American community. Uh, we spend a lot of time talking to our Asian community, to our Latino community. I myself sponsor uh, the Latino community in New Packard Enterprise uh, because we recognize that uh, the fabric of our society in, in the US is changing. Um, by and large, if you really look at the demographics and how they are evolving. Uh, the, the baby boomers in the US are dying at about 4,000 per day. And that is in normal circumstances, it's excluding the pandemic. And the this is a country of immigration. And this is a country where um, immigrants play a huge role in their contribution to the overall growth of the GDP of the nation. And this is why for us, it's a very important part of who we are and what we do. And that's why there is such a very intentional focus on making sure that we promote within the company. I think there's a number of conversations. And the first one is just as we're all starting working remotely on a broader basis, how do we stay connected to everybody? How do we make sure that everybody is part of the conversation, particularly as we're working remotely? And how do you make sure you're giving the right support to people? So I think there's that base level that has become prominent in all of the discussions that we're having. The second area of actual diversity and inclusion and targets, we've just um, filed our 2021 sustainability report and we were able to report that we've delivered on our diversity and inclusion goals for 2021. And not only that, we have now published our 2025 goals, which again sets more ambitious uh, targets. We've also been recognized as employer of choice in 17 countries around the world this year. So for us, really this, how do we continue to extend diversity across the organization and inclusion? It's really part of how we do business now because we recognize that we're a better organization the more diversity that we have in the organization itself. 
it's been on the discussion and uh, front of mind for senior leaders in the board for many years. So actually, we're starting to talk much more about ethnic diversity, generational diversity, cultural diversity, as these are all really critical to creating an inclusive culture. Uh, I've actually had the benefit of uh, seeing um, how diversity works around the world and different cultures. And actually, I do think it really helps you bring diversity of thought to uh, how we um, manage business priorities. And so very, very active conversation uh, across all levels of the organisation. We actually have a diversity inclusion organisation within our company. So we are very focused on ensuring that we understand um, where we're at as a company with regards to diversity and inclusion. Being a technology-based company, it can be quite difficult from a gender perspective. Um, so it's certainly a focus of ours. It is part of what we have as um, targets for each of us as individuals. It's certainly something that we talk about at the leadership level and at the board level. Uh, we're about to um, bring it into our recruitment processes. Um, you know, all of those things, and particularly as a multinational company, it's really important that we understand all the different benefits of all of the cultures and the different groups of people that we have working for us as they all bring their own perspective to things. So it's, it's absolutely critical to our success and an absolute focus and something that we're continuing to evolve as we grow.